Okay. Ron. <clears throat> I hear the church bells ringing in the background. That's my clock. Oh. <laughs> Sound like church bells. <laughs> Westminster. Westminster, there we go. Yeah. Mary Louise, are you in Colorado? Yes, I am. Well, it's greetings. It's eight o'clock here. <laughs> wow. Wow. You might get the award for the farthest away coming. <laughs> oh, what a surprise, Dave. Um, to be determined. <laughs> ice cream. It's ice cream day. Oh, is it? Is it ice cream day? National ice cream day. Well, thank you. <laughs> Every day's ice cream day. <laughs> there you go, Bob. Thank you. So Milky Way is open, right, at 4 p.m.? Yeah, on the weekends, yes. Yes, only on the weekends. <laughs> Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I have been informed. Well, I've, I've been to Milky Way uh, a couple of times now. I missed it all last year. I don't know how I managed to do that, because people were kind enough to tell me about Milky Way. But I made sure I didn't miss it this year. <laughs> oh! <clears throat> so good morning, Downingtown United Methodist Church! Good morning. good morning! So next week, um, we're thinking, we're, we're not sure about this, uh, but there is a good possibility that we will be streaming services live uh, from the uh, sanctuary. And things will look a whole lot different than they are now. For one thing, I will be probably wearing my mask, although I need to continue to speak with people about that because there are a number of uh, different feelings about that. But um, <clears throat> in the end, I will make my decision about that. And, and uh, and I will do that on the best uh, information I have. Uh, and, um, and so there we go. There, there is that. Uh, and we will let you know what we're planning on doing and, and, and how we're planning on doing it. Uh, if we do stream live, we won't be going through the Zoom uh, system. We'll give you the opportunity uh, to, uh, we'll let everybody know how you can come and see services live at home uh, and uh, what we will do in terms of having people coming into the sanctuary. Uh, for the task force, the group of people who I've asked to inform me about this, uh, I will, um, we'll, we're gonna, we planned a meeting, a Zoom meeting tomorrow night at seven. Uh, as far as uh, Bible study is concerned, I will have the Tuesday night Bible study this week uh, but the Wednesday morning group agreed that uh, there is so much that's going on uh, that we're, um, we're not going to have, we're skipping a week uh, for the Wednesday morning. Uh, are there any other announcements that we need to make at this time? Speak now. Or I'm supposed to say, forever hold your peace. <clears throat> okay. Um, so with that, in, uh, we're going to move on to begin our worship service. And uh, let's prepare our hearts and our souls and our minds uh, as we listen to our prayer.
greeting together. We worship the God who inhabits our world and indwells our lives. We need not look up to find God. We need only to look around within ourselves, beyond ourselves, into the eyes of another. We need not listen for a distant thunder to find God. We need only to listen to the music of life, the words of children, the questions of the curious, the rhythm of a heartbeat. We worship the God who inhabits our world and who indwells our lives. Let us pray together. God of all the seasons, God of the years, God of the eons, Alpha and Omega, before us and after us, your promise and we wait. We wait with eager longing. We wait amid doubt and anxiety. We wait with patience then and then doubt. And then we take life into our own hands. We wait because you are the one and the only one. We wait for your peace and your mercy, for your justice and your good rule. Give us your spirit that we may wait obediently and with discernment, caring and without passivity, trustingly and without cynicism, honestly and without utopianism. Grant that me wait, we, we may wait appropriate to your coming soon and very soon. soon. Soon and not late. Late, but not too late. We wait while the world groans in eager longing. And our affirmation of faith today, we will read it together. Hear the good news of the psalmist's proclamation. If I say, surely the darkness will overwhelm me, and the light around me will be night. Even, Even the darkness, the darkness is, is not dark, dark to God, and the night is as bright as the day. The God who promised never to leave us or to forsake us has come to us in Jesus Christ, who binds up the brokenhearted, heals all of our infirmities, and relieves our burden of sin. So arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of God has risen upon you. Thanks be to God. And our prayer of illumination, if you wish to join me, please. Holy God of mystery and miracles, reveal your presence to us as we gather in worship. Send your Holy Spirit to descend upon us as angels once descended to Jacob. Raise our thoughts that we may reflect on your promises and trust with hope in promises yet to come. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Now you need to unmute first, Martin. There we go. Good. Today's first scripture reading is from Genesis 28, verses 10 through 22. Jacob left Beersheba and went towards Karen. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. 
taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to the heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until, you, until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid, and he said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head, and set it up for a pillar, and poured oil on top of it. He called the place Bethel, but the name of the city was Lutz, Lutz and then at the first. Then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will be with me, and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and clothing to wear, so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God, and this stone which I have set up for a pillar shall be God's house, and all that I that you give me, I surely will give one tenth to you. The second scripture reading is from Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 through 30, and 36 through 43. He put before them another parable, parable. The king of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let them both grow together until the harvest. And at the harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house and his disciples approached him saying, explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with the fire, so will be it at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen.
So as we were listening to that first lesson, and there is a picture of that first lesson right there. <laughs> uh, as we were listening to that first lesson, I was wondering if you might have noticed how often the word place came up in the passage. You're probably not counting words as you listen to the lesson, but it comes up seven times. And biblical scholars will tell us that when a word or a phrase shows up over and over again in a passage, that's something we ought to pay attention to. The word place shows up seven times in this story of Jacob and his famous ladder. Makom in the original Hebrew. Sacred space is very important. I don't know if you have a sacred space. If there's a place where you go to pray, to be in the presence of God. In the age of COVID-19, place has taken on a whole other significance for us, a whole other meaning. Jacob discovered sacred place, sacred space, the evening he laid down his head in a place that he would eventually call Bethel, the house of God. Now, we haven't been able to gather in our own sacred space since March 15th of this year. April, May, June, and now we find ourselves in July and wondering when we are going to be able to gather again in this sacred space, in this sacred place. We're hoping that maybe next week we'll be able to do that. Uh, we're not sure yet, but we're hoping, uh, and we will let you know as soon as we have a clear plan about this. Maybe we'll have that plan tomorrow night. We don't know. But last week, we left Jacob having finagled his brother's birthright out of him. I, I wish I could tell you that Jacob's story gets better this week. I, I can't. Uh, the descendants of Abraham are like the rest of us, which is to say that they are a deeply flawed people a people who fall short of the glory of God. Jacob, the younger brother, is a wheeler and dealer. And as I mentioned, he finagles his brother, his older brother, out of the family fortune. That's a story which we can hear over and over again. Esau was loved by his father Isaac, but Jacob was loved by his mother Rebekah. And when the father Isaac realizes that soon he might be giving up the ghost, Isaac asks his son Esau to go and prepare a favorite meal for him in order that Isaac can, after he received that meal, uh, bestow on Esau the blessing due to an elder son. Rebekah works with Jacob to pull the wool over Isaac's eyes. Actually, Isaac is kind of blind, so in order to make Isaac think that Jacob is the hairy Esau, they pull the wool uh, on over uh, Jacob's arms in order to deceive Isaac. It's not Isaac's eyes which they need to deceive. A feast has been prepared for Jacob to bring to Isaac. Now, Isaac, skeptical when he hears Jacob's voice, skeptical that Jacob is truly Esau, uh, asks him to draw near, but when he feels the wool on Jacob's arms, he becomes convinced, and he gives Esau the blessing. Now, a little later, Esau shows up with the meal, only to be told that he will not get the blessing of the older son. It has already been bestowed upon Isaac. Well, you can imagine how Esau felt about that. He wants to murder his brother Isaac, and I believe he says as much. Rebecca quickly packs Isaac up and sends him away to her brother Laban, 
in order to keep him from being killed by Esau. Her excuse to Isaac is that she doesn't want Jacob to marry one of the local girls. They're not good enough for her son, Jacob. Which is how Jacob comes to be wandering through a strange land. Jacob comes to sleep the night at a place, as it mentioned, that he will be calling Bethel, Beth House, El God, the house of God. On the run from home, escaping a murderous brother, off to meet a part of the family he's never seen before, but perhaps he's heard a few stories, and if he has, he needs to be worried. Regardless, he must have been very anxious that night, feeling anything but blessed, feeling anything but prosperous. And at this moment in his life, Jacob needs to come to a sacred space, a sacred place. At this moment, Jacob is in serious need of divine intervention. Well, we know what happens next. Having fallen asleep, Jacob is given a vision of angels and this ascending, ascending and descending on a ladder. Well, the truth is we know today that the English translators got it wrong. Uh, Jacob is actually, uh, his vision is actually one of a stepped pyramid or, or a ramp, which of course, if you think about what Jacob saw makes a bit more sense because what Jacob saw was angels ascending and descending on this ladder. A ladder is kind of a narrow uh, piece of equipment for angels to be ascending and descending on. But a wide ring, well, that makes a little bit more sense. Uh, angels, messengers of God, bringing and taking messages up to heaven. Of course, the ramp thing is great. I mean, it's absolutely wonderful. And even if we've got that song, we are climbing Jacob's ladder, every rung goes higher, higher. I'm not too sure that, uh, that ramp works quite the same way as ladder. But that's not the biggest moment in this passage. The biggest moment comes when God speaks directly to Jacob and announces, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, the God of Isaac, and the land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring. And and your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth. And you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Maybe that in that promise, there's a promise for us that you will be brought back into this space. One day, maybe even as soon as next week, maybe there's that promise. I would like to suggest that we are like Jacob. In this place right now, in this digital place we call Zoom, and in this moment, we are all standing on holy ground. This is the house of God. And God's messengers are ascending and descending, bringing us messages of God's love and God's plans for us. And if that's true, what is required of us in this moment? What does God expect of us if we are indeed standing on holy ground? Nothing. God expects nothing of us but our all. If you are breathing, if you are able to understand what I am saying, then that in and of itself is a miracle. It's an everyday miracle, something that has happened for so long that we easily take it for granted, but it's a miracle nonetheless. And that miracle points to the idea that we are standing on holy ground the house of God, because you breathe, because you can understand what God has done for you, the place of God's dwelling 
is located, not even just here, but also directly within you. As Paul says in his uh, first letter to the Corinthians, we are a temple of the Holy Spirit. In 1955, the Southern writer, uh, the Southern Catholic writer, Flannery O'Connor, published a series of short stories, and one of those stories was entitled, A Temple of the Holy Ghost. It starts with uh, two young girls, fresh on break from a Catholic school. Now, they, uh, we are introduced to them, uh, uh, and they are beside themselves in laughter over the memory of a Roman Catholic nun who had been lecturing them on how their bodies were temples of the Holy Spirit. And they just found that ridiculous. They, 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 uh, they just were laughing. And of course, the nun was speaking about this passage from 1 Corinthians. But these worldly Catholic girls, they're beyond all that. And I don't think they had too much respect for that particular nun. But they kept on referring to themselves as the temple of the Holy Spirit, one, and the temple of the Holy Spirit, two. Later in the day, they and their family visit a local carnival in town. And in that carnival, at that particular period of time, there was a, what was called a freak show. The girl's younger 12-year-old cousin comes away from the experiences of this day with the understanding that all of us, all of humanity, even those folks that they saw in what they called the freak show, all of us are temples of the Holy Spirit. I love Flannery O'Connor's take on all this, how she has the ability to place wisdom in the simplest of her characters. The, mo the most unlikely people get it, just as it was the brother who receives the blessing that nobody would have expected to have received the blessing. The younger brother gets the blessing. The younger brother gets the birthright. That's the way God seems to work. The very ones we least expect often are the instruments of God's purpose. Just like Jesus told us, they would be. Yes, wherever life is found, the Holy Spirit finds a home. Coming back to where we are right now, what does all this mean for us? It's the question Jacob had after he woke up from his vision. All God did was reveal to Jacob all the blessings that God intended to bestow upon him. God did not say to Jacob in that moment, and because you are receiving these blessings, I expect you to do A and B and C and D. All God did was say, you know, you are the one who is going to be receiving these gifts. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth. You will be a blessing to people in the west and the north and the south and the east. That's it. In this experience, there was no expectation from God that Jacob should have to do anything. Jacob didn't even need to set up that pillar to mark this profound moment when he saw the ramp which led up to heaven with the angels in ascending and descending. But Jacob, Jacob himself felt compelled to do something, and he makes this silly vow. A vow which starts with a very strange word, if. Jacob is not all in on this God business because he starts with that big word, if. If God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and clothing to wear so that I come again to my father's house in peace. Then the Lord shall be my God, and this stone which I have set up for a pillar shall be God's house, and of all that you give me, I will surely give one-tenth to you. 
I really don't believe God's blessing had anything to do with Jacob's big if. I do think that that's the way we as human beings do our theology and the way we live out our lives. We, we, do, it exact, we do exactly what Jacob did in this passage. I think about our approach to COVID-19. And it feels like we are trying to make the same type of bargains which Jacob made. I will wear the mask if it means that our economy is going to return back to normal. I will practice social distancing if the government promises not to come after me. I will do what is right if the scientists can assure me that all will be well. We bargain as if one can bargain with an unknown virus. We bargain in the midst of the blessing of life itself. God will bless us despite all our attempts at bargaining, as we are blessed every day with the rising of the sun in our daily bread. We should do the right thing, not because we are worried about losing God's blessing. We, we should do the right thing, not because we're negotiating with each other over what the right thing is to do, we should do the right thing because whether we do the right thing or not, God will love us. And God is constantly giving us opportunities over and over again to get it right. Amen? So we lift up our joys and our concerns at this moment. Uh, I noticed uh, that Jeff put in the prelude today that uh, this was in memory of Buddy. I don't know if you know it or not, but Jeff had a beloved cat by the name of Buddy. And uh, it seems that his cat, uh, if I'm reading it correctly, his cat passed away. So we should remember Jeff uh, today and we should remember Buddy. I'm a cat lover, so, you know, somebody loves a cat, loses a cat. I, I know exactly what that is. <laughs> I've had that experience, and, uh, and, and I feel for them. And I imagine there are a number of you out there who feel the same way. Um, that's a concern. I like to start with joys. What are our joys? What, what are we celebrating? Uh, today's Zach's birthday. <laughs> Zach's birthday. <laughs> birthday. Okay, everybody. Oh. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Zach. Zach. <laughs> happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Hey, thanks, everyone. <laughs> that was a cacophony of, uh, of birthday <laughs> blessing. <laughs> okay. So, what else do we have to say? It's a beautiful day. Uh, Gail is in Florida visiting her grandchild, so uh, that's something to celebrate. Yeah. Uh, it's a beautiful day. Uh, the uh, Good Works crew from Downingtown United Methodist Church in 90 degree weather, I don't know whether they wanted to celebrate that, that particular <laughs> Uh, was busy repairing the home. Are we? We're, you're back there next month. And we're and there's a lot to do, huh? It's not going to be finished next month. No, I didn't think it was going to be finished next month. But I was talking to the homeowners, and they were like, they don't know how much work is to be three or four months, four more months. So. Kathy and her mother supplied a feast for the uh, Good Works crew. Yay! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, so that's wonderful. Um, so those are all good things. And I give you another chance to celebrate something. There's some really good pictures on Facebook of um, the work day. Well, yes. Thanks. Um, John. I think, what, who, who took the pictures? Oh, 
I took the pictures, but Josh magically made them appear on Facebook. <laughs> it's a multitude of uh, hands involved in the project. Okay. Um, okay. How about concerns? Well, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not going to make you give me concerns if you don't have them. But let's, uh, let's bow our heads. And uh, in this house of God, come before uh, our Lord. Gentle shepherd of the sheep, uh, we are always in an attitude of gratitude. We thank you. We are thanking you for the multitude of ways in which you have blessed us. We thank you for the multitude of ways in which you are present to us every single day of our lives. Uh, we thank you for the privilege of being able to do your work uh, with uh, the Good Works Organization. Uh, we, we thank you for uh, providing us with daily bread and even raising up some of our members here uh, to uh, do that very task uh, for the folks in the Good Works Group. Uh, we thank you uh, for new life in our presence. We, we thank you that Gail is able to make that trip down to Florida and see uh, flesh of her flesh and bone of her bone. We thank you that our strength and our purpose in life comes directly from you. In the week to come, make us conscious of all the ways in which you are directing our steps. Turn us away from all those perishable things we want to grasp, those, those items which have no connection with your eternal purpose, uh, those, those bargains which we make every day, uh, and uh, bargains which you have not called us to make. Hear us as we raise our concerns before you, concerns for those who have been affected by this particular time. Uh, help them to know that you have not let them go. Help them, uh, give them an experience of not unlike that of Jacob, that they might know that you are indeed present in their lives and that you have a promise for them and for their descendants. Be with Jeff as he is no doubt continuing to mourn his, uh, his cat buddy. Like, Jim, like Jacob, we have been tempted to set up our pillars, to mark the milestones of our lives, pillars to our own greatness, which appear so small in the presence of your glory. Like Jacob, we are ourselves busy with wheeling and deep. Cast your light upon us so that our lives may bear, bear witness to the light of Christ. For it is he who taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, well, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So we uh, come to that place where we're going to uh, offer our, uh, our gifts. And of course, we're not going to be doing that in person. Uh, while we're thinking about that, I, I direct your uh, attention to the image of uh, the folks who are going up and down that ramp, the angels ascending and descending. Um, I thank all of you who have been so faithful in continuing to support the life of this congregation. Um, for those who have not been able to, uh, I thank you for your presence. And, and I ask uh, that you not be, you know, don't put your, a guilt trip on yourselves. Um, we don't want you to give if you're not able to. Um, but we will accept your prayers in any way in which you might be present to us. 
you know the way in which to give. We have our, uh, our website, so you can give electronically. Uh, and if you're uncomfortable with that, you can mail your offering to, uh, to the church uh, using the U.S. Postal Service. Um, let's take a moment and consider the multitude of ways in which God has blessed us so that like Jacob, we can be a blessing to the people of the earth. And join me in our prayer. God of ancient times and future hope, we bless these gifts to bless your world with hope. Please bless our gifts that they may be a blessing to others. And bless us with patience and faith that we may bring hope to a hurting world. Amen.
Thanks, Jen. And I will leave you to be able to talk with each other. Uh, you can unmute yourselves. Uh, this is our fellowship moment uh, uh, here right now in this in this moment. So, uh, please. No one has anything to say. Hmm. Pretty quiet out there. <laughs> Everybody's hot. <laughs> yeah. Stay inside today. Drink lots of water. Mm -hmm. Yep. See bye, bye. Have a good week, everybody. Okay. Bye. 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 Have a good week. Goodbye. Bye. Take care. Uh. Did you hear me, Dave?